Hello again, everybody. Zach Attack is here with my third row review this Monday, November the 12th, 2018, from the Sprint Center in Kansas City, Missouri, where I was my first row review in a couple weeks. Uh, I went to a casino trip last Monday and I got home pretty late. So I did watch this while I'm recording. And since I didn't make a review in the last two weeks for anything, I will say this about Crown Jewel. Hated it. God, it was horrible. Wing of Honor kicked the fuck out of Crown Jewel. The last five events, the Survival of the Fittest and Four Nights of Global Wars were shit times better than Crown Jewel. With the shit when a certain guy who we did not want to see win the Universal Championship goddamn won. So, that was wall last week in UK. I did watch it, like I said. Didn't make a pop review for it, but it was an okay show. Bogged down by the night of rematches. We were going to get some rematches tonight. Thank God we didn't. But as we built towards Survivor Series with a rush build, thanks to having Evolution and Crown Jewel before it, and having a wee scramble to call it after Woman Wade's got sick with leukemia, they were not gonna even going to do a wall for the SmackDown theme, but they did it. I thought this wall, with it being the last before a rush build Survivor Series, was an okay show. Decent stuff. We got most of the team set for Survivor Series on the wall side. And we got, finally, since we've been having a rush build to Survivor Series, we haven't had a proper invasion angle yet. We got one to end the show. And wall ended on time. They were now allowed to go after 11 as mandated and forced by USA Network. Because of Wall's faltering ratings. Maybe it gets more ratings because my night football sucked tonight. Anyway, we are set to kick off Wall with a battle royal with all the Wall tag teams to see who would captain the tag team Survivor Series match. The brand on brand. We didn't even, I don't, I think I'm going to be correct here. We didn't have a tag team Survivor Series match last year. We didn't have one. But we're going to have one this year. Usos and New Day are the first two teams on the SmackDown side. Usos your captains. And New Day is in the team. I'm guessing we're going to have the Sanity team finally getting him over. Uh, maybe the Clones and the Good Brothers. Since Harper and Warren are out with injuries right now. The Bludgeon Brothers. Who knows what would happen if they stayed healthy. But as this tag team battle royal for the War tag team captains... What's going on? Braun Strowman came out. A little bit of deja vu after being at the wall when Braun basically buried the tag team division. I was like, don't tell me Braun's going to win this battle war and become the tag team captain again and have his little 10-year-old partner Nick come back for one night only, Nicholas. But we didn't have that. Instead, Braun just cleared the ring. Want to get those hands on Baron Corbett. Who screwed him over at Crown Jewel and helped Lesnar in a shitty match, by the way, win back the Universal Championship to everyone's dismay, including myself. God, it took every ounce of my being to not get pissed off. I was the most pissed off at a wrestling match since Kevin Owens lost to Goldberg in 30 seconds at Fastlane last year. And I didn't smash anything. That's why I didn't make a proper Crown Jewel if you are so pe fucking pissed off. At the results of Crown Jewel, Shinnick Man, the best in the world. No, no, we ain't. Anywho, I heard Braun didn't win the championship because he has an attitude adjustment backstage. He's a bad attitude. Yet, you give the title to Lesnar anyway. Fuck you for that. Anywho, as Braun was holding Wall hostage to make sure he gets his hands on Braun's enemy, Corbin, stabbing a man who has already promised to appear. Came out to address Corbin and Strowman's situation. Corbin is the team captain of the Wall men's team. He would not be in it. He's just on a coach side. Braun is on the men's team alongside Drew McIntyre, Dolph Ziggler, and two more main names to be added on throughout the evening. Stephanie's like, I know you're mad at Corbin. I know. I get your understanding. She's doing face kind of. She's like, but guess what? You and Corbin better get along. And everyone on Wall gotta get along. Because you are gonna beat up my brother for coming in out of nowhere and taking the Bass of the World title. 
for himself and for SmackDown. Kind of a heel move. But hey, they was gonna have that they woke up with so hype, yet they just had it up. Build up Survivor Series. What the fuck? Anywho. As Sonya was trying to rally, storming up, she gave him an ultimatum. More like a, a deal. A compromise. That Strowman can have whatever he wants. He can have a match against Corbin and a match against Lesnar for the Universal Championship. A rematch. And if he finally wins it, it's too little too late. He's always the bridesmaid, not the bride. That's why we've been booking him. Despite fans cheering him. Chanting, get these hands. They still can't pull that fucking trigger for whatever reason. Whether it's backstage things with Strowman, like I said, behaving bad backstage. Or whatever the reason is, you can't pull that trigger and fans are not going to care anymore. Stephanie's like, I'll give you what you want as long as Wall wins this Sunday and you don't lay your hands on Corbin until after Survivor Series. Corbin came out and also did Rousey. Second message to uh, Becky Lynch. I'm liking that match even though we haven't seen him uh, uh, having any confrontation from, uh, physically, besides that little standoff at Evolution, they've been changing bombs on their own shows, which I've been loving their promos. I love Bondas, but I think Becky is just sharper. I've always been a Becky girl. A Becky guy. What should I say? I'm wearing a Spice Girls shirt for a reason. Because we're referring to a sign we saw. I did like the sign that's called, like, we're not even trying. That is the basis of WWE these days. Uh, anywho, as, uh, Corbin was trying to talk down to Rousey, she judo throwed the hell out of Corbin out of the ring, leaving Corbin and Strowman nose to nose. But of course, Stephanie kept pointing at Strowman. Remember our deal we made? You get whatever you want as long as Wall wins, and you don't leave your hands on Corbin until after Survivor Series. So we're going to see Corbin get, Corbin get the hands of Strowman later, after Survivor Series. But they'll they be on the same team. And we'll see who else will join the men's team in just a little bit. And I did like the reference Stephanie made in this promo. She's like, I'll give you anything, Strowman. Planes, trains, and automobiles. Nice 80s movie reference, Stephanie. Steve Mullen will be proud. In rest in peace, John Kenny. In rest in peace, Stan Lee, too. Now on to our first proper match after the Tag Team Battle Royale was cut off. We were going to rematch of that later on to determine the Tag Team Captains. We got Ember Moon against Tamina. Of course, Tamina and Nia are now a heel team. They've been teasing a possible team up, and they beat up on Ember Moon last week. So Nia's a heel again. Especially when she's going to challenge Rousey for the World Women's Championship at the Survivor Series thanks to winning the Evolution Battle Royal. So the match was decent for the most part. You know, Ember did okay moves. But of course, Tamina's big strong moves and trying to push her as a threat to the Wall Division. Beat down on Ember and ended up with a big Superfly Smash for the victory. Sad to see Ember lose this. So, I wish Ember was on the Survivor Series team. We will find out later on who would be on the women's team. That will be a main event segment, by the way. So, but at least it was a good main event segment. I think a lot of us were like, that's the main event segment, but at the end of being a good thing. So, uh, Nia Jax and Tamina beat down on Moon after the match. So, they go, okay, little match. They're pushing Tamina and Nia hard as a heel team. So, there you go. Speaking of great heels that Tamina and Nia aren't at this time. Of course, Seth has been wanting an answer from Dean Ambrose for why he did what he did. And by the way, we have new Wall Action Champions. AOP won him in a handicap match last week against Seth Rollins. At least we got the tag titles taken care of. I wish it was Revival still. Especially now we're going to get AOP against the ball at Survivor Series. I wish it was the Revival against the ball. That would have been a much, much better matchup. But Dory doesn't want to give us what we want sometimes. And yet, Stevie McMahon thinks they'll be bigger than Disney. Yeah, right! Anyway, they've been getting bought out by Disney. Been hearing those rumors for a while, but... Anywho, uh, Baron was backstage, but more importantly, Steph was trying to address Dean Ambrose while being interviewed by, uh... Corey Graves in the ring. And Dean's been refusing to give Seth a proper answer 
of why he did what he did. Just beats him down. And he has these funny faces. Great facial expressions from Dean the last couple weeks. He has to get focused on his champion versus champion match against Shinsuke Nakamura this Sunday. Which there was a little more build on that one. But they're building on Seth and Dean. But the Dean will get involved in it. Guaranteed, Dean will get involved. I thought he was going to get involved in Crown Jewel, but he never did. So, we did see Dean pop up on the screen. I like the visual. A red car behind him, him sitting menacingly against it, and a little trash can with a fire on it. Kind of a sign, kind of like a little bit of a symbolism for war. It's a dumpster fire sometimes. Maybe that, people. Anywho, I did like Dean's promo. Saying, I'm not going to give you guys an answer. I don't owe you an explanation. I don't owe you anything. I don't owe the fans anything. I've been the same guy. I've been the same man, but guess what? I've been so selfish to not get clear-headed about what's going on, but you and woman using me. Make me feel weak. Being the shield, wearing this vest, this bulletproof vest, made me feel weak. Hey, nigga, we in the fucking living room. And every day is a new day. He wants to burn down the past, which is literally what he did. It's kind of interesting. We had a light up trash can, and yet Ambo's going to throw that vest right in it. It would still have a same impact and still get fired. But he had to put gasoline on it. He put gasoline on the vest and tossed it in. He didn't need to do that. But hey, great segment. Great bubble from Dean here. Gave me some sort of an explanation, not a clear one still. And we got more anticipation for the eventual face-off puppet match with Dean and Seth. Which I feel like I said would be built up more at Survivor Series when Dean probably screws Seth over in this match against Nakamura. Now into our next scenario. Drew McIntyre and Dolph Ziggler coming out for a promo. First things first, Kurt Angle's music hits, thinking it's Angle. But nope, it's Dolph and Drew. Drew beat up on Kurt Angle. Angle wanted to beat up on Baron Corbin to get the captain spot, but after being chased all night by a Braun Strowman literally out of the building last week, being scared to face Angle because he didn't want to be beat down by Strowman, failed to get those hands, he had Drew take on Kurt in a beatdown match and having Kurt Angle submit by using his own finisher, the ankle lock. One of the few men, I think there's like a stat, like only the Drew's like one of like three or four guys to make Angle tap out. So that's big. And they're really pushing Drew as the top heel on the wall brand now. So that's great. And maybe he will be Universal Champion one day. And that might be what they're heading towards. Great promo here from Drew. Tell him how he beat down Angle. You know, he saw fear in his eyes and all that. And we have no more nostalgia acts on wall. Maybe he could have beat down Triple H and Sean if they had a chance. Before Troy Mitch got hurt. So much for his match against Batista, probably. Maybe we may not get Nastasha Shell unless they want Tanker and Shaw, which hopefully doesn't happen. Anywho, we had Finn Balor interrupting. Stepping for uh, Drew McIntyre beating down Balor before the match that Drew had with Angle after he faced Slashy for the billionth time. He was saying that you're a big bully and all that, and I want you tonight, Drew. And Drew's like, okay. Fan, you get what you want. You get a match against Dolph Ziggler. But if you beat him, you get me. So, we have some good news. Double good news. Good news, we get Finn Balor against Dolph Ziggler. Should be a fun match. More better good news. No Finn and Lashley again! Yeah! Woo this dude beats the red, thank God. And this match was pretty good. Very fun match for these two guys. Uh, Finn tried numerous times for the coup de gras, and Fowler would get distracted by Drew in the weak side area, and also get caught by a couple of Dolph's I think a couple of times when he did a coup de gras. Uh, he landed on his feet a couple of times, but then ate the famous sir near the ending as he was attempting yet again to do the coup de gras. He landed on his feet, but he tweaked his ankle a little bit. Dolph tried to warm up, but Finn would reverse him in his own roll up, and like he did it last year recently. He beat Dolph Ziggler with a wall up. So Balor gets the victory here. And a fun match against Ziggler. At least it wasn't against last year again, like I said. So we would see Finn talk to Stephanie backstage. And Stephanie was like, I'm so happy of you, Finn, for stepping up for what you believe in. And for that, you 
get to be on the Wall Men's team. With Corbin as your captain, of course, we know their differences. You know, we, we have that feud that needed to end. And, of course, Stephanie told Dolphin Drew that news when they came backstage. And said, so you got to get along. I know you guys hate each other, but guess what? Just for this Sunday, get along. Beat up my brother. Dolph, you got screwed over at Crown Jewel. Beat up all that anger, frustration, and the shame. But then after Sunday, you can beat the fuck out of each other whenever you want. So, there you go. We're going to find out the fifth member of the Wall of Men's team later on. Now, on to our next segment here with the Ruby Wyatt Sky. Coming out to address what Ruby Wyatt did last week to Natalya in a rematch involving the Wyatt Squad against Natalya, Bailey, and Sasha. Uh, the match kind of abruptly just ended with no conclusive ending after a pair of glasses that Natalya got to bring out to ringside that she wore that were allegedly worn by her dad, Jim and Ann for Nighthawk, which I believe were not his real glasses. They were not actually smash a real pair of Jim the Anvil Nighthawk's glasses. But they said they were, and Ruby Why got some cheap heat by whipping the glasses, and that was it. Natalia was locking in the sharpshooter on one of the members of the squad, and she saw Ruby whip those glasses apart, and the match just ended. Like, no DQ, like, it was just a no contest. So it was kind of a weird ending, just ended, like, suddenly, with no ending. And I like Ruby's promo here, saying that, you know, she feels bad, you know, Jim Anvil, Nighthawk's a legend, and kind of interesting, they're kind of almost exploiting a death just days before a death, they did exploit the death, but the pun, and in Guerrero's death, the anniversary is just a few days away. But then she turns it around by saying, like, oh, I'm so sad, but I'm not! I whipped those guys, and I'm proud of it! So she was laying down a good little heel promo there, and the tire came down the ringside, Wanted to beat up on Ruby, but got taken down by the Wild Squad. And thank God we didn't see Sasha and Bailey come out and get another match for the millionth time. But they put insult to injury. As if whipping the alleged sunglasses of Jimmy and Van Nyhart is bad enough. They decided to do the heart attack on Natalya. Kind of a rough heart attack, but still. They did it nonetheless to add more impact to Ruby and Natalya in their problems. Let's see what happens later on. They may have to be forced to team up. Now speaking of teams, we have uh, before we get to the rematch of the Tag Team Battle Royal, here comes the Universal Champion. Brock fucking Lesnar. I'm not as upset as I was two weeks ago, but still. I'm not the only one who's like fucking not happy about Lesnar being champion again. I'm glad he got booed. Anyway, the only good thing about him is Paul Heyman. He did a little bit of decent promo. Talk about AJ Styles. It's the only good thing about Lesnar being champion again is that we're going to see an AJ Styles Lesnar rematch. But I did like that match. It was Lesnar's best match since he's returned at Survivor Series. Hopefully he doesn't fucking do any bullshit this time. It doesn't. Because we've seen what happens in Lesnar rematches. The Niles Gun is the first. Lesnar Woman at Mania 31. Until the Wallens cash in was good. And all the rematches sucked fuck. Sucked ass. Media 34. Pff. Greatest Warrior Rumble. Pff. SummerSlam. Pff. So, we don't want this rematch against AJ Styles to be sucky too. So, there's that. So, Manny got interrupted. Well, people say he being him got interrupted by the man who was going to face Lesnar before they did an about face. And if AJ Styles beat up for the WWE Championship just days before Survivor Series in Manchester, the modern day Jabaraja, I mean Maharaja, Maharaja, Jinder Mahal, trying to give Brock Lesnar advice for AJ Styles and get him some spiritual shanty healing. And Lesnar grabbed the mic from Heyman, saying, Come on, Paul, let him in. You need to hear this. You are Jewish. And that was funny, but that is why Lesnar doesn't speak. Because he says shit like that. Funny, but offensive. In a PC world. Anyway! We have Lesnar trying to do the Shanti thing, but in my mind, he's probably saying not Shanti. He's probably saying Suplex. Suplex. Exactly what happened. Beat the fuck out of Sin Brothers. 
suplex the hell out of him. And he he kind of like he just he throws on both. He threw one sick brother back first every time, but the other one got landed neck first. And then F5 gender on the floor. And in the segment delivering a message to AJ Styles for this Sunday. Hopefully AJ wins this time, but I'm sad to say Lesnar will probably win again. And hopefully the match doesn't suck and is better than that crown jewel. Now, on to the match to determine the final member of the Men's Survivor Series team with Elias. Taking on Lashley. At least it wasn't Lashley against Balor again. The newly minted 24-year-old piece ago, just two 24 over the weekend, Leo Walsh was doing a little poem with Lashley. Trying to be like Leo with his own little shady, you know, hustle shades on. And then Elias ended up on the phone. Calling Child Protective Services, making fun of Leo Wash again. Whose kid is this? Like, yeah, yeah, this man, Bobby Lashley, kidnapped this kid a few weeks ago. How old is he? 10? I love his promo there. And, uh, he is a good baby face. I'm actually liking him as a baby face. Because sometimes, I've said this before, I've seen a lot of good heels become shitty baby faces. But he's actually a good heel and a good baby face as well. Because people want to cheer him. And as a... Uh, now is the reason why I'm wearing this shirt. La, as Elias is walking down, I uh, saw a sign of Kyle that was funny. He said, Elias should open... Or the Spice Girls should open for Elias. Spice Girls are on another reunion tour. And I'm not shy to say it, but I am a Spice man. I'm a straight guy, but I'm a Spice Girl guy. And I saw this... I, this is the shirt. I, I got this on the reunion tour with Posh. He's not even on this tour. But I was kind of funny to see it. And I had a shirt on, I was like, wow! <laughs> it's kind of funny. I had a shirt on, and I had a Spice Girl weapons on one and I with a sign. That was kind of funny. The UK tour only right now. Let me add more days later. Anyway, we had last week against Elias. We had these two had a little mini feud when last was trying to be a face, but people were cheering Elias more. So it was an okay little matchup until they brawled on the floor for a little bit. And Leo, who had only the wing, grabbed Elias' leg. Preventing him from getting back in the wing. And Bobby Lashley is your fifth member, winning by countout. So, some good news and bad news of this. Uh, the good news is, at least Elias didn't get pinned, especially after his great showing against Tom Ziggler last week. But the bad news is, Lashley, I like Lashley and all, but his one on WWE, and I think everyone can agree with this one, Lashley's comeback one in WWE has been uneventful. The shitty storyline from Sami Zayn, and I thought this Leo Rush thing would help him. Unfortunately, it's doing him more damage than good. This Leo Wesley, I thought it would be a good help. But it's not. It's not helping him any matters. It's not helping him get a big attention. Leo's more annoying than anything. And I love Leo Wash. I love him Ring of Honor. From what I saw of him in Ring of Honor. But bam. I should never want that treat about Emma. Now she's got skin for ISS and all that. Anywho. So Lashley with the team up with Balor. Whoopee! So it's Lashley. Fowler, Storbin, Ziggler, and Drew. I guess Team Co Captains, Miz and Deepak, who are not getting along. No, interestingly, getting along. I did like their interactions last week. Shane, for some reason, should have been somebody else. Way Mysterio, and Jeff Hardy. Not Samoa Joe, who beat Jeff Hardy last week to get that final spot. On the men's side. But we're going to find out who's going to be the wall team captain of the tag team side. I forgot, the, forgot that match. I think it was before this. We had a tag team battle royal. And uh, Bobby Roode and Jack Cable won by eliminating the Ascension last. Makes sense. They, little, they were the last two teams, by the way. And it's okay, little battle royal. So that it wasn't Revival or B Team or Lucha House Party who just debuted. But Roode and Gable are your tag team captains. And it will be on the pre-show. As of right now, the Cruiserweight Championship will not be on the pre-show. But knowing the pre-show's two hours, it probably fucking will, sadly. And Mustafa Ali and the new Cruiserweight Champion, the Juggernaut, Buddy Murphy, do not fucking need to be on the pre-show. 205 Live has been really good lately. And people need to watch 205 Live, but it sucks. When the only opportunity on the main pay-per-view, they're on the motherfucking pre-show every time. They need to stop that. And they better be on the main show. Better be on the main show, but I'm fearing they'll be on the fucking pre-show. Probably going to announce it on 205 Live on Tuesday or Wednesday, should I say. It tapes on Tuesday. Airs on Wednesday. It's on Wednesdays because of the Mixed Match Challenge. 
before I get to the main event segment, I need to mention they're adding some stakes to the mixed match challenge, which I've been watching lately and it's been entertaining. Again, uh, last season they fought for charity. The winning team got money for charity. They're actually getting some stakes in this. The winning team will get the 30th entry in both of the Royal Wumbles of the respective sexes. So that's kind of cool. They get to fight for something besides money, something that goes a long way in wrestling terms, you know, winning a spot in the Royal Rumble, a coveted 30 spot, and a trip around the world, an all-expenses-paid trip to anywhere in the world. That's interesting, too. So, interesting to add those stakes in. Now, on to our main event segment, by the time we got to, uh, 10, it was like 10.30, I was like, they're gonna have this main event segment of the women's thing for a half hour? But now we knew why. So, Alexa Bliss, who's unable to compete due to numerous concussions, and there's been rumors about her having to retire, but we twatted that on Twitter over the weekend. She picked her team of Natalia, who wasn't in the ring because she got sent home after the whole Ruby Wyatt thing. Tamina, Nia Jax, and Mickey James. No, Alicia Fox, happily. But the fifth slot would go down to either Bailey and Sasha. Finally, we get to see these two wrestle, but too little, too late to see these two wrestle. They fucked up their story so hard, the payoff match ain't even worth it. But, after okay little action with these two women, including a nasty bird of belly on the apron to Sasha from Bailey, uh, they end up being beat down by all the wall women. You know, they like Tamina, Jax, and Mickey, and Bliss, and all their guys came in and beat them down. Having a double DQ. So both women didn't get in. So since they did not win, they named the fifth woman Ruby Wyatt. Yay! I'm happy Ruby Wyatt's in it because when they named the team, especially having Tamina in it, it's like, Willie, really? you're not having Ruby Wyatt in the team? But hey, they blow a big opportunity by not having Elias in the men's Survivor Series team. So they blow a good opportunity to put Ruby Wyatt in there. But it's kind of interesting that it's Bailey Sasha match. Why even have it? They're going to have Ruby Wyatt be the fifth woman after all. You know, especially this should have been a blow-off match for their stupid story that got too stupid. Too stupid! So, at least the match happened, but it ended the double DQ, but we do have uh, the silver lining is Ruby Wyatt is the fifth woman on the team. Great. But then, shit gets interesting. We go backstage, something's happening. We finally get an invasion. Like I said in the beginning of the video, we are one week away from Survivor Series. We have not seen any invasions yet, but we finally got to see the SmackDown Women invade. As you saw, Wilder Rousey be put into the December by Wilder's opponent at the Survivor Series, Becky Lynch, walking down to the ring, and from the crowd, here comes all the SmackDown Women, including Charlotte, who refused to come out for the Survivor Series Women's Team Naming, she is supposed to be in there with Naomi, Oscar, who's sadly just another woman, Sonya Deville, and Carmella. And she and Becky Lynch were actually on the same page, beating up the Wall Women. Because we saw the Wall, the SmackDown Women's title holder and the SmackDown Women's team alongside the other Wall SmackDown Women, should I say, the Iconics, and Lana and they, who dyed her hair blue for this, beating down on the Wall Women before some. We and Forbes, like Dana Book and Alicia Fox try to come in. And then Ronda Rousey, bum all in all, came out to beat down the wall women, smack down women, should I say, before Becky came back in with a steel chair, started nearly across the arm of Rousey. And someone tell me how Blair Lynch got cut up. I was watching it a couple of times. How did Lynch get cut up so badly? She's like, nasty cut above her eye and nose. Someone tell me, someone comment, how did Becky Lynch get cut up? I must have missed something. So we saw Becky Lynch standing tall on wall with SmackDown women laying out the wall women, especially the wall women's champion being laid out by the man, Becky Lynch. I loved it. So we had a good reason why this women's segment was made event segment. The invasion of SmackDown women led by the SmackDown women's champion won the Wowsy's opponent and Survivor says this Sunday, the man, Becky Lynch. Wish I had my last kicker shirt on, but hey. Women power. Oh, I got my Spice Girl shirt on, so. Girl power. Becky power. People power. 
People power! There you go, my John Lone Eyes impression. So that is it, my wall be dude. I will probably will not be making a Survivor Series review, by the way. Um, I'm actually going to a live wrestling event. An independent wrestling show, XICW, this Sunday. I will watch the Bible series and get my thoughts about it next week on my wall review. But I probably won't make a proper review of it because I'm going to XICW probably. So with that being said, you've been attacked by the review from Zen. Happy Veterans Day. Happy Rusev Day. Happy Everything Day. See you later. Bye-bye.